All right, so uh, I previously um, made my plan for building this marble machine lift. Um, and so I just got some materials. Um, I got some two by fours. I have a big four, a 10 foot long, four inch um, piece of ABS pipe um, for the rollers. I have uh, this metal angle bracket. This is mostly just for testing. I haven't got, you know, I'll have to get a lot more of these. Um, I have a couple more black pipe um, things. And then I have a big, a sheet of plywood for stability. So I'm gonna start by building the frame for this thing. So let's go. I used my sketched out plan to measure out and cut the boards to length. The first board was split down the middle into two four foot boards. Then I cut the two tall boards. In my original plan, the lift is about five feet high, but I decided that the taller I can make it the better. So I just extended the height to six feet. I'm making two identical sides to the frame. When putting the second side together, I assembled it on top, so the two sides were perfectly lined up. Now I needed to add some sheer strength to the frame. I laid down one side of the frame on the sheet of plywood and traced out a section to be cut out. I'm using this one sheet for both sides so each cutout just has to be less than four feet. When the first one was cut out, I traced it on the other side, so both are identical. Symmetry is key with this lift, so the belt tracks well. I attached these with one and five eighth inch screws. So uh, before I connect the left and right sides of this frame, um, I need to figure out how far apart to space them. And that's all gonna be based on kind of the factors of the um, anything that's involved with the rollers. So I'm gonna go move on to that. Yep. Um, okay, so I have, right here I have a half inch steel bar and then here's two of the bearings. The thing I'm gonna kind of work on right now is the beginning part where it's going to connect to the motor. Um, and so at this end is a flexible coupler. That's what it is. Um, and so then this end will connect to the gearbox. Um, and so I need to work on how I'm going to bring the rotation power of the motor of this bar into the, um, the PVC pipe. So that's the tricky part because if this is just spinning loosely and not actually turning the PVC, then there's no conveyor belt motion. It'll just be dead. I have a, a, a length of PVC here. This is four inch ABS pipe. And then I got, I found these things, which are, it's a, a clean out. So it's a flush mount clean out, which means that instead of it, yay, instead of it um, mounting, uh, connecting to the pipe the, on the outside, it actually connects on the inside. So, so um, that means, let's see, let's go into the, oh, there we go, there we go, okay, so there, so it mounts all flush-like, um, which is good, because then I can secure the threads of the clean-out to the flush mount when it, well, I'll glue the, I'll glue everything all together, so it'll be locked and loaded. So, I need to punch a half-inch hole, Hmm, how am I gonna do this? I'm, I'm gonna punch a half inch hole through the center of here, and that's what the pipe will go through. And because it's all lined up, I think if I just lined it up in the center, it should be good. I don't see why it's not, um, there'd be, it'd be strange if it was off-centered. And even if it was off-centered, the um, it would be so minuscule, it wouldn't really affect anything. So I'll have the hole in the center, and then I need to be able to crimp something basically to the pipe um, and then screw it into this. So I think if I get a piece of wood, the bearings that I have come with these couplers, 
And these couplers basically screw into the pipe, or uh, um, have a, a, a set screw that basically will screw in to the pipe and kind of hold this to the pipe so this rotates with the pipe. Uh, editing Ben here. Um, I keep saying coupler, but I really should be saying shaft collar. So I need to do something like that but for this thing. But the other part that I need to do is I need to screw in from the set screw, um, from the, this coupler piece, into here. So that way this rotates with that. So the coupler piece that'll go here on this end will be the one that connects to the pipe, but then it'll also connect to the PVC here, um, which will give it that, which will force it to rotate with it. So if I have a couple of screws that go into the pipe that way, and then another one that goes through the pipe or like insets into the pipe or into the, into the shaft, then it will, uh, it'll just force it all to rotate. So that should work. I think we'll be good. So let's all put it, let's, uh, let's put it all together. Let's give it a shot. This lift will have four rollers, but before committing to the system, I just worked on one roller to see if it would work. I'm making the shaft collars out of birch wood. This is a leftover scrap from something I made, either my office desk or my living room mantle. It's a hardwood, so it's more durable and less likely to crack or split. I traced larger circles, then punched half inch holes in the centers. Then I cut them out on my scroll saw. Now I needed to attach the shaft collars to the PVC. I figured the best way to make sure that it's secured is to drive four machine screws through both and tighten them with washers and nuts. These are small 832 machine screws, often used for electrical stuff. If I needed to secure the wood to the metal rod, I can add a set screw later. I put all the pieces together to test out how well this would work. So I don't have the um, I don't have the coupling attached to the uh, attached to the bar yet. That'll come a little bit later. Um, but just for the friction, it works pretty well, and it's really quiet, which is good. So based on the rotation speed that I have, um, it's supposed to be about 28, or you know, one, uh, one rotation every two seconds. If I put a piece of tape here. It should go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 1,002. That'd be pretty fast. That'll be a lot of, that'll be a lot of marbles. <laughs> I wonder if that's too many, if that's too fast, if I need to make this smaller. Well, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. Um, and then if I have to make it smaller later, I'll just make it smaller later. Okay, so the things that I need to do now, on the conveyor belt, the conveyor belt will probably want to shift around side to side. Um, so in order to keep the conveyor belt in line, I need to put barriers on either side of the, of the edges. And the way I'm going to do that is just with um, some, some more wood, I'm basically going to trace, out, trace the outline and make a bigger piece that goes around this. So I have this thing set. Um, this is kind of where it needs to be in terms of like the, the width. So I'm going to include this on both sides, this thickness. So we have our 14 inches for our conveyor belt. Then we have um, three quarter inches on either side. Well, plus, plus a, a little half inch buffer, plus three quarters on either side for our, um, our guides. So was it 14 and a half plus another inch and a half? So we're looking at 16. And then it's gonna have these little doodads, which this adds how much? Let's say another inch. So 18 total plus, plus another inch. So there needs to be a, well, maybe an inch on either side for, for adjustments. So I need to have a 20 inch gap in between um, as, a, as a void for the conveyor belt. Yep. All right, let's go. Now that I know the spacing, I cut 27 inch long boards 
and secured the two sides of the frame. So now that the frame is pretty well set, I need to make sure that it is not askewed in any way. So it could be, you know, a little bit that way or that way. Um, so I'm going to put a piece in the bottom that's going to make sure that the base is where it needs to be. I had a half inch sheet of plywood that was almost exactly the size I needed. It used to be the clamp rack that I built earlier this year before doubling my French cleat storage. I popped off the holders and trimmed it down to the right size. I'm glad I decided to do this step because the bottom was definitely skewed just a bit. All right, now it's time to punch the holes for the bearings. I used shims to make sure the base was level, then used a longer level to get equal heights for the bolt locations. For the top bearings, I just put them up high. I can always make adjustments later. These three rollers will be locked into the frame, and the fourth will be added later, if needed, for tensioning purposes. All right, now I need to get back to working on the rollers. As I planned out, I need four pieces of pipe at 16 inches long. It was a little tricky cutting this larger pipe, but I was able to get it done with the chop saw, though it sure does make a mess. I repeated the same process as before to punch half inch holes in all the caps. I also made sure that they were threaded all the way in. The drill bits don't really carve through PVC as much as they do melt through it. So I made sure any melted frays were also removed. Using the same method and materials as before, I put shaft collars on every single PVC cap. This was just a tedious process that took a lot of time, though the effort is worth the reward, hopefully. It would be a miracle if I could get the conveyor belt to stay exactly in line with where it needed to be. Unfortunately, I don't build miracles, so I have to make guides on either end of the roller. I'm using a 1x12 to cut extra large donuts. These donuts will slide on and attach to the roller at both ends. I made eight, one for each side of each roller. I first started with one to test and make sure it worked, then used it as a template to make the rest. Even after these guides are on, I'll still have work to do later to track the belt in line with the rollers. When all the guides were cut out, I dry fit them on the pipes as well as the end caps. I did crack one of the guides, so I'll have to remake it later. I brought these guys over to the lift and threw them up for a rough test. This test will hopefully confirm a few different things for me. One of those, and the most important of all, is the confidence that this is going to work. It'll also confirm that my rollers are in line and that it's quiet. I tied a string with some tension around the rollers and gave it a whirl. It was working great and this is with minimal tension. The entire reason for the fourth roller is for adding tension. There is still a lot of work to do on this universal marble machine lift, but I've made some good progress so far. I feel pretty confident that it'll work out in the end. Stay tuned for more. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Hey, come here.
touch, 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 good boy. Sit, 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 sit. sit. Hey, hey, hey. Oh my gosh, I can't. You guys are crazy. Okay, okay. 